welcome back to the stream. We are on Heroes of the Storm. On the left-hand side, we have Alaska, and on the right, we have Dad Force. Now, this is an NGS game, the Nexus Gaming Series. I, I, for some reason, every time I want, I want to say, like, NGS, I want to say NGS game, like, it, but it sounds redundant. So, either way, welcome back to the stream. We were off for, like, half an hour. I, I took off a sweater, and I got, like, the three glasses of water in me. So, here we go. These are best of two. Um, so we just, we're going to have two games in our hand now. Going to Tomb of the Spider Queen. Hmm, I'm quite excited about this. I, I, I really like this map. There's uh, a lot of short rotations you can make between the lanes, which often offers some, some very intricate uh, rotations. And actually, we have a Garrosh ban out from Alaska here. Now, the question that I have is, are we going to have a... Ooh, actually, never mind. And straight into the ETC. Holy crap. All right, we're going way too quick through this draft. They're going to go out ban the Kale Tuzal. That's interesting. Now, the only thing I'm not too sure about, I believe Falstead is still banned. So that is something that I believe the teams will need to consider. Now, I don't often see him, you know, I, I don't think I see him often picked on this map. Uh, his wave clear... I just, it, you know, it's like one of those heroes. I think that just there's other heroes that might do it a little bit better. Currently, as Malfiel and Rig are being picked up on the side of Dad Force. They got a good wave clear, uh, potential solo laner. They've got a really good chain heal. Are they going to try and go into a Cho'Gall? That's a possibility. I think that. Realistically, I think either team at this point could. It's just a, it's a, it's a question. <laughs> it's just a question of if they choose to do so. Stukov would be pretty good as a healer here, and then you could maybe go for your solo lane or at least your high damage, so like a gray main. So like a Stukov gray main would be pretty good. Um, Stuka providing a lot of good uh, zoning with the lurking arm power pairs well with the ETC and actually they're gonna get Zagara in this mid rotation for picks they're gonna go for the solo so they go for the the Zagara for the solo lane here and honestly I've been seeing a ton of Zagara put, being played on Tomb of the Spider Queen lately uh, she, I mean honestly like since there was a little bit of her I think played like HTC on Dragonshire, and I think that kind of just spread, like, and then we started seeing her on, like, Braxis, and we started seeing, like, there was just, like, a revival of Zagara all of a sudden, and, and just kind of this, there's a little bit of, I don't know, it's like a, there's some compositions that seem very, uh, push-oriented to me, and they're, they're meant to, you know, de continuously, like, add pressure to the lanes, but never really, um, it doesn't have the power to end the game. So I'm curious if, if it's something like that. Or we've also seen different drafts, you know, more controlled drafts also from some other teams where they're where they're trying to, you know, hold the pace of the battle in their favor. They have a lot of uh, heroes who have some sort of uh, sustain. So that way they can just kind of stand there and fight and kind of really, you know, slow down their enemies. But either way, I'm just kind of throwing ideas out at this point because, you know... Is that hot? Hey! Rooting for Dad F. Okay. We got someone in chat rooting for Dad F. We actually have a swap from Arthas to Joanna. Joanna being able to group some of the waves a little bit better, so she is good in the rotation factor, as well as in those fights, she is pretty powerful. The Bless Shield's a very good option to take, as well as Falling Sword, realistically, is it, it's really useful. So it's not a bad idea. Also, if they go into maybe a solo hyper carry, I mean... I guess it would be a solo hyper carry, but if they, you know, if they go into like a Vala here or they go into something that is auto attack based, the the, the Joanna can mitigate that that person for quite a little bit. Home of Poe, thank you for stopping by. Kendo Hots, thank you for stopping by. It looks like it's gonna be a Joanna ban. I like this. Now, what are they gonna put pick up in this? Three four slot on the side of Dad Force. Hmm. 
They're going to need to pick up a tank at least, and then maybe they go into their damage. So, I mean, I personally like the Lunara, but on Tomb of the Spider Queen, I've been seeing a lot of Cassie. No, also, we have, we have to get... Well, they do have Malfeo. I wouldn't consider him, like, major wave clear, but they might honestly just go into a mage and a tank here. So, like, a Kael'thas or a Gul'dan wouldn't be bad. But if you're going into Gul'dan, you should have drafted Ariel, I think. Hmm. And then tank-wise, uh, I think Arthas is actually a pretty good pickup here. But Anubarak, not a bad idea. And with Li Ming. Okay. So they're going to go ahead and get Li Ming. The only thing... Hmm. Li Ming has good poke. And she has a really good... Um, she's just got a, a very good ability to just, like, consistently roll the, the tide of battle in your team's favor, you know, with those resets. If you get a kill, you get a reset. But here's the thing. The Stukov lately has just been pretty powerful, and I believe at this point, I don't think the Lee Ming gets a whole lot of value, at least what's been drafted on the side of Alaska. Murda RG. I feel like I've seen this before. Hmm. These last two slots, though. They're going to need some sort of damage as well as wave clear, I do believe, at least in the rotations. We're going to go for Grey Mane and Kill Me. The artillery into the back line is going to be really bad. That's actually... That might do quite a bitch to leave me... <laughs> Quite a bit. Excuse me. Quite a bit. I punched my mic on the way down that one. Uh, quite a bit to the Li Ming. At the same time, though, Anubrak does have the spell shield, so he might be able to block some of those sand blasts. At the same time, it, you know, it's just going to stack for Chromie. So that's that's interesting. Now, what are they going to take on this last slot on the side of Dad Force? Malfield's been picked up, so I'm assuming he's in the solo lane. They could go into a second tank or maybe an off. Tassadar is still available right now. I don't. He doesn't. Uh, the other thing that he doesn't pair well with many of the. Like if maybe they had picked up a Vala or something, they could go into a Tassadar. His wave clear is just really good. The the force walls would be just a pain in the butt. But then again, like you know, you you know the Aria would pair better. Better. They're gonna go into Diablo. They're gonna take that extra tank. It's a little bit worrisome, though, because at that point, Greymane can just have the Curse Bullet. That's two targets. Now, granted, Diablo does have the Souls and can come back quite quickly. My beard is worth the price of admission. I'm a touch quiet. Yeah, I always... I My mic is always some sort of issue. You like the Anub better than the Arthas. Well, let's go ahead and try something. So, the reason my mic is usually a little bit quiet, so I just bumped it up a little bit, uh is because my computer has quite loud fans. So the whole issue for me is that, you know, I usually turn down my gain so that way it kind of drowns out the fans a little bit more, but I guess I could balance it out with a little bit more gate. Either way, we're going into this game. On the left-hand side, we have Alaska with Sierra on Zagara, Varen on Stukov, Hedgy on Greymane, Rexpa on Chromie, and Bubble Biss on ETC. On the right hand side, we have Big Beard, or excuse me, we have Dad Force with Big Beard on Li Ming, Tofuts on Diablo, Rory on Anubarak, Velvet on Rhaegar, and Kurt Dog on Malfiel. No, definitely, yeah. Yeah, the only thing with turning up my mic gain is the louder my mic gain is, the more background noise there, noise there is. And it just, it's something I gotta fix. I have a design idea, but it, I'm afraid it might mess with actual airflow to the computer. Um, just to do like a little bit of a sound wall. Either way, let's get into this game. We'll worry about that afterwards. Now, on the side of Alaska, they are gonna be picking up the Time Walker's Pursuit. Looks like they're going for the proc rock. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Cocktail build from the gray main. The extended banelings from Sierras. Excuse me. Uh, that's the way, way old one. Oh, no, no, no. I, I'm, I'm right. No, I'm thinking of... Um, the, old, the old one, I think, had range and... 
Um, we actually have Deathly, Death's Reach for Malfeel. So they're going for that extended range. Li Ming is actually going to be going into the Astral Presence. But let's get into this game. The good luck and have fun is already out. We already have CS going into that bottom lane currently. So it looks like Diablo will be kind of posturing in that area. Orb going out onto Bubble Disc. Going to take a little bit of damage. At this point, though, the teams are playing extremely safe, just waiting for this, uh, these waves to get into the lane before they really go for the clear. Rex, we're going to poke out a little bit of damage here, but at this point, they're playing extremely passive in this mid lane. Now, in top, we do have Hedgy currently pushing this up quite a bit. We do have Big Beard currently rotating up there to put a little bit of damage with Velvet, as well as Rory. Looks like Diablo will lag behind in mid. Tofits will just kind of go ahead and make that rotation a little bit late. They've already got the wave clear, but at this point, Rex was going to... Looks like they're going to try and just interrupt these rotations. They get the stop onto Rory. Currently have a little bit of damage going out onto Tofuts. We do have a slide in from Bubble. This, there is a little bit of damage more coming out from Rex, but there is a stun on two big beard, but Rory going to body that damage, making sure that Li Ming won't be taking too much. Now, checking into the bottom lane... In this 1v1 matchup, currently it looks like Sierras is going to be laning up a little bit more. The minion wave is stacking up quite a bit for him. Going back into this mid, though, at this point, we do have Rory getting time-trapped once again. There is the lurking arm from Varen. And at this point, we do have Bubble Disc getting the slide in, getting a little bit of knockback. There is a little bit more of sand dropped onto Rory there, but... Definitely bodying that damage and utilizing that Nubarian armor to its full extent. Oh, well, yeah, I guess I could hug it a little bit more. That is true. Um, and I kind of, I, I guess I've been trying to do that a little bit. But either way, we are going to have this another rotation just kind of, you know, spotted out. And, and the nice thing about Chromie here is that she actually is in these rotations that putting the time trap out, it definitely is something that... You can spot the rotation, so if they go in for that sort of flank or they at least attempt something, they it, it gets spotted out. Now, looks like they're about halfway on the side of Alaska as well as uh, a Dad Forest, but it looks like they're going to kind of start to... Nope, okay. I saw Hedgy going for the turn in for a second, but it looks like these two teams are just going to be going... French kiss it. Uh, but these two teams are just going to basically be just making the rotations and getting the... Uh, as many jewels as they can. Currently in bottom lane, we do have a little bit of a matchup here. I just want to check something really quickly. I have a little bit of stuttering. I will make sure that something's off. Okay. Okay. So we should be fine at this point. We do currently just have another rotation in this mid. And it just at this point, on Tomb of the Spider Queen, is just making these rotations and, and pretty much just trying to get a little bit of damage out. But if you're consistently countering them, they actually try and go for a little bit of a pick on the Sierras, but he does back up. Tofits. <laughs> I'm horrible with, with some of these names, but either way, we do have a little bit of some, some action happening in mid. Like at this point, it this is the one thing with with Tomb of the Spider Queen these rotations. Like uh, most of the teams at this point, the one thing that they're gonna just focus on is just trying to get these gems. We do have Kurt Dog actually rotating up into the mid, swapping out with Diablo. That's interesting. It's very interesting that you, they do that to the rotations. So at this point, we're going to have Kurt Dog just staying in mid. And it doesn't look like they're going to be able to get any sort of advantage. 34 on the side of Alaska. They do have enough for a turn in. It looks like they're going to go ahead and try and get that. At least they're showing in bottom, potentially maybe trying to help out Zagara get these 15 in. Because that will be just barely enough. And we do have a slide in from Bubble This. There is the silence from Varen. They are one short. Caster math was off. Unfortunately, Rexpo holding a couple here. But it looks like Hedgy is at that turn. And they're going to go ahead and get that. Rory trying to get a couple in at the last second. But unfortunately, will not get it in time. this point though we do have a rotation up into the top lane from dad force hedgy just going to play from this back lane but in the mid we do have a little bit of pressure silence already going out from varen actually that's interesting they took the ex they took the range talent at level one hmm typically on a map like this where you're sieging a little bit the the extended range is that's interesting i'm 
to question these guys at some point about that. Currently, though, have Rex throwing out a little bit of damage into that backline. Velvet taking quite a bit. Vern going to get the silence out in that backline, and he's going to be taking... He's quite low, but he is going to dive in, try and get the chain heal onto a few members. We currently have Hedgy diving in as well. Velvet will be the first kill of the game at this point. Kurt Dog could potentially be following soon. Ooh, the cocktail out, but it looks like Bubble This will dive in and block out Kurt Dog. Now they can zone away 20 of these gems, and this will delay another. This will delay quite a bit of a turn in for uh, Dad Force, and it looks like they're going to go ahead and get that. They also, they also start to push into this mid, going ahead and confirming this tower for themselves. This is an extremely strong push on the side of Alaska. Now it looks like they are about halfway to 10. So at this point, I wouldn't be too surprised to see Dad Force kind of turtling up a little bit here, uh, making sure they're playing a little bit safe because they do not want to get caught out, maybe force the 10s for the enemy team. We currently actually have a dive onto Rexpa here. Rory doing quite a bit of damage. The power slide in from Bubble This. He actually will get a little bit of a body block. But it looks like, I believe during that entire engagement, that triggered the most the majority of the Nubarian armor. So if they do go for an engagement here, uh, they do have quite a, bit of, quite a bit of an advantage. Poke is out from Rexpa. It will delay this. They're not able to get the turn in on the side of Dad Force. They do get the slowing sands out, which will kind of zone a little bit here. Also providing a little bit of vision for the team themselves. Now, in bottom lane, we currently have Kirk Dog working back those gems that he lost in that initial engagement earlier. A little bit of hope coming up from Rex who will not connect. We currently have a rotation in from Hedgy. Tens have been achieved on the side of Alaska, so they are definitely they're playing a little bit more aggressive in their lanes. You can kind of see them a little bit further postured up, but because of the vision here, I was about to say they were going to go for a gank, it looked like, but uh, Sierra's seeing them on this rotation because of the vision provided from the creep. Now, we do have the majority of the team kind of rotating in slowly. We do have a dive in. Rory trying to get those gems turned in for a split second, but it looks like they will get the zone out. Bubble this, able to get a power slide out. He does have Mosh, so that is something that we do need to note. There is the stun out from Rory. We do actually have Kurt Dog falling so close to death. Chain Heal was there just in time. But at this point, they are getting their lanes pushed in quite a bit. Now, at the same time, they can turtle up and wait for the waves to come to them, and they can definitely get their 10s off of this. Once they get that, they can start to push these lanes back. But on the side of Dad Force, they're going to need to play this extremely safe. Um, mostly because of the fact that if, if they do lose one or two members, that can snowball into a huge advantage on the side of Alaska. Now, at the same time, they are trying to delay this turn in. They only need three, excuse me, not three more. They only need eight more. Uh, but they actually get a little bit of slow on the Diablo dive in from Edgy. But, okay, we're going to be fine. He had Velvet the entire time. Rhaegar was able to be giving him the heals that he needed. A little bit of a poke here. I'm going to go ahead and just pull away the talents really quick. Because it looks like this is going to be the defense before the next turn. Like, th this is pretty much just going to be what kind of gets the next turn. They're getting a lot of delay here. Big Beard trying to get it in at the last second, but unfortunately will not connect. We do have the power slide in. A double mosh. The cleanse is there. The apocalypse is out. They actually almost get the Diablo, but he actually will get the ancestral into the back lane, though. There is the web wrap onto one of the members of Alaska. Rory will actually be falling here. Vern will be coming out of the web wrap, I do believe. So there's a one for one trade currently. Do have Velvet taking a little bit of damage, but that chain heal will be just capping him off right away. Kurt Dog just getting missed by that for a split second. Big Beard will dive on to bubble this. We'll be able to just power slide away. Sears will be able to get a ton of damage out into that back line. And that will be actually Diablo falling. He does have soul, so he can get right back into this game. Velvet will be taking a little bit of damage. There is a chase onto these three members who are below like an eighth of health. But it uh, looks like they'll be able to get away. But unfortunately, they have to deal with these web weavers. Now, at the same time, Diablo's already back. Anubrex already back. The, the death timers aren't that long at this point, so it's not that bad. So we do have 13s on the side of Alaska, so at this point, they will be trying to take advantage of this by pushing into the lane. Oh, and we do have Tofu. Whew. Okay, so he does get out. He doesn't get chased down, but he is kind of getting zoned by Bubble This. I do believe he does have the vision of him every time he's in here, and he's not sure of whether he's in that bush or not. He goes ahead and rotates into the bottom lane, shows himself, which... 
That means Bobo Lift can go ahead and rotate into this mid with the rest of his team, and they currently scout out the majority of the members with the Time Walker's Pursuit, that level one talent from Chromie. Slowing Sans is out, but we do currently have Kurt Dog kind of in that positioning for that back line. Tormented Souls is now available. Chromie will scout it out, actually. He does get the mark on to Varen, but he is kind of getting zoned by a few of the members. There is a stun out. And this entire time, they are getting a lot of pressure into their other lanes. Top has been pushed in so far that it's, it's going to be approaching the keep gate. Now, it doesn't have a ton of health, but they can make a little bit of a play here. Either team, realistically. Now, if someone just extends a little bit too close, like the camera, excuse me, uh, they might potentially get picked up on the side of Alaska. But it looks like they're going to play safe into their minion wave. Rory coming out a little bit far here. Does get the stun out, which buys them time to get away. Tofitz is... Hiding in this, beyond this wall. He does get the vision with the stump, but doesn't look like he chases or anything. It looks like Sears will be utilizing the nice network to get into that bottom lane and create a little bit more pressure with this camp that's going to be picked up. So we do currently have about a two and a half level difference, and it looks like uh, 13s are really close on the side of uh, Dad Force. Now they can potentially, they can fight here because it's even talent here. But at the same time, even talent here doesn't mean that you're also even level. Because there is there is a power advantage for having level. You do scale your hero. Uh, so at this point, they are going to try and get a turn in here. Kurt Dog has 39 gems. Just trying to get him to turn in. Now, he could potentially go for the bottom. We're going to go ahead and pull away the bottom screen here. Uh, we'll pull it back up in 13s are achieved. But just want to just see everybody on the map here. Can leave an orb out from Li Ming onto Rex, but Big Beard will get a little bit of that damage out, but unfortunately it's just not able to get those resets. But we do have a little bit of a dive in from Kurt Dog. There is a huge web wrap onto one of the members, though. There's a flailing swipe out from C or from Varen there. There actually is no deaths currently. Even the apocalypse had gone out. Bubble this getting forced back behind the gate. That will also be Varen completing his level one level four quest, I do believe. And actually, they're going to dive onto Kurt Dog. He will be dying. That's 39 gems. Rory is here, but he does get the Ancestral. He goes for the pickup. Gets the majority. Uh, gets quite a bit of them, actually. Uh, they get the power slide in from ETC, but that's going to be all those gems falling. And they still don't get a turn in. Now, they currently have mid lane, bruiser camp, bottom lane, siege camp. And they're about to have a boss marching down that top lane. <sighs> This is a hard spot to be in on the side of Dad Force. This is, you're down three levels. You can't fight. You technically can't fight unless someone maybe potentially goes a little bit too deep. Uh, then maybe they get some sort of pull with the Diablo overpower and then stun. They can isolate one of the members. Um, but definitely they need to make a big play off of that Apocalypse as well as the Web Wrap and, and the, um, excuse me, the Tormented Souls. They, they, they have a lot of the assets they need there, but definitely they just need to, they got to play safe. And unfortunately... Alaska isn't giving them time to play safe. They're just forcing this. They're, they're saying, you're down two levels at this point, just about. We're going to just force them to a keep because you. it's going to be hard for you to fight us. Uh, Topaz is actually getting quite far, and this is actually going to dive right onto Hedgy. There is a Curse Bolt that went out. The Cleanse is out as well. Uh, there is a Mosh onto one of the members, isolating Kurt Dog from a few of the members. There is the pushback onto Rory. He will be falling. Topaz will be falling as well. He doesn't have souls. That's both of the tanks currently falling. This boss is at half health. Do they march onto the core with it is the question. Big Beard is trying to get a little bit of damage out. The power slide from Bubble This will not connect, but it looks like the core is starting to fall. Currently have it falling. The GG's already thrown out. It looks like this is going to be game number one going over to Alaska. GG, well played. What a game number one. Oh, my heart rate's still just, it's still going after that, after, after playing Alien Isolation there. Excuse me. But we'll take a quick peek at some of these damage numbers. That was, that was quite an interesting game so early. It, was a, it wasn't like a high death game. It was just, it was very, I talked about this in draft, like they just, they had good push the entire game. They won off of the push. Um, because you saw, like, there was that mid-engagement where where I believe uh, uh, Dad Force was trying to force before the 16s were achieved on the side of Alaska. So 
Um, Alaska was just trying to disengage, but they were technically taking the fight. The majority of the uh, heroics were used, I believe, during that engagement. And whether it was used for disengage, but I mean, there was web rat, there was you know apocalypse. They were they were trying to dive down these members and force this fight, but they just played their game. They got the push that they wanted, and they forced you know forced forward. So uh, a very controlled game on the side of Alaska here, and just I'm curious to see what we're going to be coming back with on the side of Dad Force in this next game. I like the picks. I just uh, the unfortunate thing is like Li Ming just didn't unfortunately get the resets and 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 and. ETC bodied so much of that damage. Zagara did too with a lot of those Banelings. And it was just a really well-controlled game from both teams. Um, but either way, we're going to go ahead and we're going to set up the next lobby because I am excited to get into game number two. Which, of course, I... Or, okay. Whew. I was like, where did I write it down? I knew I wrote it down somewhere. All right. Let me go ahead and set up the lobby here. So we're going to make me observer, tournament draft, no match history, team number two. Ooh. Let me get the lobby link out, and we will get going into this next game. Um. Okay. Uh, my game is just currently just... There we go. All right, um, I just want to kill one thing really quick because I was a little bit of stuttering, I could notice, and it was just bothered me. So we're going to go ahead and just kill Discord. Um, that should be solving any sort of kind of like minor stuttering issues that I, I think we're having. Um, we currently have swap teams. Go ahead and set that. Okay, we currently have a little bit of bathroom break for a couple of members. That's perfect. I will buy time by talking to my lovely people. By the way, also thank you so much, Velvets. Velvet Sunder. Okay. So it reads all caps for me, and I'm like, oh, no, I can't. Oh, my God. Verda, thank you so much. Thank you for the 100 bits. I appreciate it. Thank you, dude. Well, go Alaska. Cheer for your team. Nice. Thank you. Your shirt is... It's so metal. Oh, all right. Well, you know, we have time. So it's actually, here's the funny thing. It's one of those like metal shirts that the moment you actually see it, you're like, oh man, I can't believe it. So I can move my mic for one second. So it's, oh, I'm doing this backwards. T-H-E. So the number 12 looks like you. It's like one of those things. It's like once like someone reads it to you, you're like, it's not throw up on your t-shirt. You don't have a baby. Um, I'm just double checking chat, making sure that the teams... All right, we do have a ready from one team. We currently just have to wait on the other team, and we are going to have an interview with the winner of this match. That's just the way that I always do these games. It's, it's just way easier. Um, Stukov Chromie, very strong point. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. All right, so... I'm going to go ahead and let the teams to have good luck and have fun. I'm going to go ahead and hit that start button. Oh, no, no, no. Switch to ref. Okay. I think I got it. All right. We're going to go into game number two, Towers of Doom. Please tell me I'm re am I ref? Okay. I didn't swap it, so uh, give me one second. I need to message the, the team members because uh, just the wonderful way that this works. I just have to open up Discord. And I apologize, uh, stream, really quick. Um, I also didn't update. I'm just a horrible host. Uh, left side team score. Okay. Um, I'm just going to let the teams know. So I apologize if there's no audio. It's just I, I'm tabbed out of the game. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay, um, so I'm going to go ahead and message him, and then I'm going to try and get a message out. A new subscriber has oh my god, fired. Big Beard, thank you so much for the subscription! Oh my god, thank you so much, I, I absolutely appreciate that. Um, I'm just going to go ahead, I'm just letting the teams know. No, no, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't mean to. T tell tell them please okay 
Um, so I got the I got the messages out to the teams. Um, I'm gonna leave Discord open just in case I get those messages back. Um, I just want to stay in the loop with these teams in case there is a pause. I know what the issues are. Um, typically, I'm set to ref, or if I have a spectator, then I can I can I don't need to be, or if I have a, another person. But oh my god, thank you so much for the for the sub. Oh really? Holy crap, Kendo! No, they're supposedly getting back together. But either way, we'll get into draft. Kendo, that is amazing. Message me about that because I've I've seen them. They're they I absolutely love that band. Anyways. Let's get into the draft. We can talk about metal bands other times. But on the side of Dad Force, they went for the first pick, Garrosh here. Going for that repositioning. I actually really like that. And they're going to go Brightwing into Chromie. Interesting. They're going to go for that global aspect. Also, the thing to note here is that Dahaka was banned out. So Rhaegar and ETC on the side of Alaska here. So strong combination at the start. Dahaka banned out for that global, so they don't want to deal with that. Hmm. Okay. Band wise, what do you uh? B -b 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 -b. They're going to need to maybe ban out a solo laner like an Arthas. Uh, hmm. I don't know, they currently don't have a solo laner on the side of Dad Force, so I don't know what the ban would be. The Arthas, it's, not, it's, just, it's just not a bad ban. It combos well with, the, with what they currently have. And what do they ban out on the side of Dad Force, though? They don't really show too much of their draft with that Rhaegar ETC. Um, realistically, they could just go for some sort of global threat. Maybe the Lost Vikings? I mean, you never know. Hmm. I don't think they're going to ban Lost Vikings. I don't know, like... A new subscriber. Holy has crap. Fired. Murda, thank you. Oh, yeah, it is my three month anniversary with you. Love you, BB. Oh, love you too. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for the subs, guys. I. Oh, you guys just. You guys kill me tonight. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. Thank you. No, oh, my God. I'm just. Uh... I'm blown out. I'm blown away by that. Blown. Just. Yeah, blown out by that. Um, Just thank you so much. Uh, Murda, thank you. Uh, Grammy going to be banned out here. Not a bad idea. Uh, overall, just a very versatile uh, hero. We did see the value that that uh, Hedgy got on the uh, Grayman last round. Oh, yes, we will. Now that I have a direct message from you, we can definitely chat. I will not forget. All right. <laughs> They could go into an Abathur Illidan here. Illidan's a nuisance on this map, especially post town. Ooh. Do it. Abathur Illidan. Murda and Big Beard throwing down tonight. Dude, just heroes of the chat. Heroes, heroes of the stream. Vanquish the weak. I mean, the. Lejana, okay. And Medivh this early? I mean, we've seen Medivh out of this team, and it is terrifying. But what's that last pick? What are you holding out, Alaska? Because so typically, whenever I've whenever I've drafted this team, they hold their Medivh till last pick, which makes me a little worried about what that last pick is about to be. I mean, we've seen some. Crazy giraffes. All right, but let, let's vote. Let's vote. Dad Force. I mean, so they don't. They need a solo laner currently. Um, they have one global aspect to this composition. Did they go into an Alarak? Maybe the silence would be pretty good actually. If 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 Medivh does dive in, so they go for the Alarak. 
and a Lunara. So they go for the poison. As well as the vision. That's a lot of repositioning on the side of Dad Force. Garrosh, Brightwing, Alarak is I'm that's a little terrifying to be honest. Hmm. What did they take in this last slot, though? So they have a tank. They have mage dam like range mage damage. They're gonna need some sort of May I would assume melee. I mean, going up a Garrosh Alarak... Because the Medivh... So I like the Medivh because it, it definitely... Not like 100% counters. Like, you pick this, you win the video game. It just it counters him in the fact that, you know, if you get that toss, you do get the portal, and then you can get an out. Ken is the opportune word. You have a Brightwing for the Polymorph. You have an Alarak for the reposition. So there's a, there's a lot of things. According to chat, there's a Hedgy interview... Hedgy demanded interview. Okay, so they're going to go Malfiel for the solo lane. That's the one thing I didn't consider in their draft here. I did not consider their solo lane. So they're not doing anything crazy, it looks like. They they have the Malfiel. I'm a little bit worried for that back line. But we'll see. I'm excited about this. Let's go into game number two. Alaska versus Dad Force. So on the left-hand side, we're going to have Alaska with Sierras on Malfeo, Rexpa on Jaina, Hedgy on Medivh, Bubble This on ETC, and Varen on Rhaegar. On the right-hand side, we're going to have Dad Force with Big Beard on Chromie, Tofoots, Tofeets on Lunara, Rory on Garrosh, Kurt Dog on Alarak, and Velvet on Brightwing. So, because, like, it's internet names. Like, internet names are the hardest things for me. So, like, like I work in, in construction, so, like, I'd read it like Tofoots because it's, like, FTS's foots. And so, like, but I don't know why I'd say Toe. It'd be, like, Tofoots. I guess, you know, doesn't make sense. It's just it's just my brain doing crazy things. So we're gonna have two foots. We'll try that. Let's try two foots. Does two foots win? No. Murder saying toe fits. Okay, so it's toe fits. Chat says it. There we go. We're actually gonna have the level one cooldown for Brightwing, the hypershift cooldown. Hmm. Sustaining power from Alarak. We have the uh, natural pers nature natural perspective, not nature's perspective. Uh, we do have Warbreaker. Nothing to, uh, like, this all looks pretty standard to me. We actually have On a Pale Horse from Malfiel. Hmm. Interesting, interesting, interesting. I'm curious to see what, how that's going to be used. I've never, I don't think I've ever seen a, a Malfiel pick up that talent at level one. I've never, at least never cast it. We have a bunch of Spin of Friendships. But, I could be wrong. Like, I'm not a pro Malfiel player or anything, so someone could basically just be like no 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 you're you're, you're you're wrong we do have a silence on to bubble this but it looks like uh we're gonna have rex just currently going into that bottom lane we'll have a rotation from rory and velvet into that and he's, it looks like he's just gonna come back up they're just pushing up that lane they're gonna utilize hedgy here to go ahead and <laughs> get the vision i just keep peeking over at twitch chat and just it's always wonderful and we have a little bit of a no, it just it goes right back into bottom. Okay, so we currently just have Rexpa solo laning. Um, we have Hedgy up in the boss area. Hovering. Um, oh, we do have a portal. Okay. So he, is, he was watching to see if he can get onto the Kurt dog here. Looks like we will have Sierra's getting onto a bright wind. We'll get the hyper shift in time, but with a four. There is this. Oh, no, but Velvet is now by himself. Sears will back off. Okay, so that's going to be first kill going over to Alaska. Now, we are going to have this altar phase currently starting up. Big Beard just kind of hiding in this bush currently. Trying to get... Getting a getting a nice hit onto uh, Varen there. Do you have another time trap out? There's already a warning called out. Hedgy looks like he will be scouting out for Tofits and Kurt Dog. Big Beard will be over there as well. They're utilizing that Lunara Wisp is really useful to make sure that they're not going to be 
getting noticed, or at least getting caught out in these bushes, but they're going to currently have Big Beard just kind of poking this out. They actually get the trade, so they're currently going to be fighting over this top point. Sears will back off. It looks like the rotation bubble, that, bubble this is here. Kurt Dog is actually all by himself. He does get knocked back, but there's the current pull on to Rory, but he currently is just going to get kind of stunned out of his abilities. We actually have the toss on to Varen, which actually puts him in a good body blocking position. Fortunately, he is the healer, so you don't want him body blocking. We have Sears going ahead and capping that point, and it looks like they will get the, out of the three, will go, two will go to Alaska, and one will go to Dad Force. Now, looks like, uh, I would assume the majority of the teams are probably going to be rotating back into their lanes and just kind of pushing these back, working towards their level 7s, as well as waiting for the next altar phase. Oh, okay. Okay. He let the, t the pale horse for tall ass map. Hmm. Okay. I like it. No. I, I honestly, I'm just, I'm never, I'm never the biggest Malfield player. So like when I see odd talents, I'm just like, that's interesting. But I guess if you do want the speed for the rotation, um, that is beneficial for you. Um, as well as I guess it does semi counter Lunara in a chase situation. Mm. Okay. Maybe, maybe that's it. We'll work through this together, chat. I feel like all the level ones are good for him. No, I'm not disagreeing with you. It's just I, I don't play a whole lot of Malfia. We actually have a little bit of damage going on to bubble this, though. Knockback is there. Kurt Dog going to try and maybe go for the telekinesis? No. Vision's out from Hedgy. They currently just get a time trap in this bush. But we should have the next altar phase starting up quite soon here. As sevens are being achieved uh, momentarily on the side of Alaska. And quite soon for... Dead force. Now we do have a little bit of a dive here onto Toefoot's, but it does not look like it's working out. They go ahead and back off of that, and they're going to go ahead and just go back to landing and, and just playing safe. Bottom now, the one thing we need to note here, has been stacked up quite a bit. These tower shots have been taken out, and there hasn't been too much of priority from Dad Force. They're actually going to go ahead and clear out this camp, but unfortunately this is going to put them in a kind of a bad position because of the fact that they're, they're dedicating three of their members. They currently just rotate the Alarak up. Looks like they won't really take advantage of this. They're going to have, I think, Varen capture. So they're going to just trade. Velvet's going to cap. The two supports are going to capture, and everyone's going to go back to laning at this point. Uh, we're going to have Sierra's back into the top lane. Looks like Rex is going to be rotating at that bottom, getting followed by Kurt Dog and Rory. It looks like they're going to dive onto this camp. Hedgy will get the vision. There is actually the, pop, the, uh, the Zine from the Brightwing. Do you have a protect on to bubble this, taking a little bit of damage? There is the portal in to. From Hedgy, uh, they can utilize that to get in and out here, and they will go ahead and do that. Uh, just a side note, with that laugh, that means the boss is up. We're at the five-minute mark of this game, so that is something that is now on the board. If they do get some sort of wipe on either side, uh, if Dad Force gets some sort of advantage on the map, or if Alaska gets the you know the same s sort of advantage, uh, they can go and rush that boss. That's four points to the court. Now, you do have to cap it, though. We actually have a huge silence on to a few of the members. Vern actually will be falling here. And it looks like they're going to go ahead and have to give this over. Looks, yep, this will be captured on the side of Dad Force. They will get that sneak kill onto Rhaegar with that telekinesis. And we will have Rexpa going back currently. Sirius is currently actually, oh, but almost getting flipped back there. Actually, is the telekinesis onto him. He does get the protect status from Hedgy. There's the portal. He will be chasing down a few of the members here. Trying to work on those master stacks. He is at 7 out of, I believe, 20, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so it's going to be... It's two kills to one kill. I mean, we're that that did pull them up a little bit in the uh, experience gain here. So this is definitely... They're starting to even out that experience. So we're only at about a half level difference. Now, we do have the telekinesis out from Kurt Dog. It does not connect under Rex, but he will do a little bit of damage. So he's just going to kind of play this, this poke game with abilities at this point. One thing that we should note here is that that Ice Spear build is going to scale throughout this game. It's going to become very powerful. Now, we do have a singular point in the lower mid, I guess you could call it. Um, Hedgy currently scouting out this camp. I wonder if the team is going to rotate onto this. Bubble, this is posture. We currently have Lunara onto Rhaegar. I don't really want to go away too much from this fight. There is actually a portal in up from Bubble. This, he actually goes through. Gets the knockback there. Fight, currently fighting over this. There's the toss onto Hedgy over the wall. Which kind of puts him in a really bad spot. We currently have Sierras, though, trying to get in. There's the slowing sand that is zoning, zoning so many of the members of Rex, but doing so much damage. Velvet with 17 health will fall here. 
That is also going to be Bubble this falling as well. Rex was going to try and just zone and do a little bit of damage onto Chromie, but that will be him falling as well. Sears will get the cleanse there, and it looks like they're going to have to give this point over. Now, they do have 10s currently, but this is a this is a huge 3v5. They actually end up dying here. Medivh will fall. Sears getting slowed by the sands. It looks like he will utilize his wave. He actually gets the <laughs> Tormented Souls, but they go ahead and they get this point over. And that is going to be 28 to 28, 10s to 10s. The level advantage has dissipated and is an even game at this point. Now, we do have a huge invade onto this camp from the majority of the team. We don't have... We do not have Sears, but they dive in right here. They actually go for the kill onto Rory. The toss is over the wall. They get the cleanse onto him as well. The Ancestral Healing is onto Rex, but the taunt is onto him as well. There is the huge ring underneath that, but they're currently just going on this point over and over again. The Leyline Seal is out. Do we set up for a mosh? We get a three-man mosh on top of that, but there is no extra damage on top of that. There isn't much really. Vern is going to dive in here with... Medivh, they actually get two kills. Oh my god, they completely turn this around. Dead for staying just a little bit too long during that engagement. End up getting killed. They actually get the... Oh, the kill under Rhaegar. Kirk Dog will just get that one kill. He doesn't get that massive Alarak YouTube video, you know, <laughs> spotlight uh, on like WTF moments. Because that's one of those moments where you see it. Everyone's stacked up and then definitely he gets that huge counter-strike and then just gets a combo. But, whew, they turn that over. I'm out of breath. But here's the thing, the entire time, experience is still just about the same. Oh. What, what an engagement. Okay, all right. So now that I got some, I could drink a little bit of water. Uh, we do have another altar phase currently popping up. The majority of the ultimates are on cooldown for Alaska and on the on the side of uh, Dead Force, they have just about everything up, so they kind of have the advantage. And I think they kind of know it. They're pressing into Alaska extremely hard. There's a power slide in from Bubble. This Kirkdog trying to get the telekinesis into a couple, getting a little bit of damage onto Hedgy. Healing totem is out from Rhaegar. That is going to be both of the points spawning. Looks like Sears will be going ahead and getting that top one. They don't think they noticed this at this time. Bubble this is taking an extreme amount of damage. I don't know if he's going to be able to live through this. The essential disconnect in time. There is a huge Leyland Seal. There is the Ring of Frost underneath. We do have Unstoppable from Kurt Dog. He does get the toss out, but Sears will be getting to that back lane. Currently have Hedgy poking the damage out onto him. They do get the kill. The, the... Actually, we get the kill onto Rhaegar from Lunara. We currently have Rory just separating from the team. Rex, but in this bush... Not getting noticed by Big Beard. There is the portal. Will Bubble this get hit? There is the poison onto him. The Ancestor, there is the protect status. Lunar diving in so deep for this. Tofuts will be dying. Not getting the kill at the same time. This altar is still available. They can still dive into this. Slowing Slans is there. Rory trying to just delay this as best as he can. Medivh going to try and bird in. They actually get the pick onto this. And it looks like they're going to punish this overextension though in defense. So they will even out this matchup. But two of the members, a few of the members that died during that engagement are already back up. So it's not like they can really rush boss because I don't think they have the time for it. And they really don't have any sort of boss control with Leyline Seal, Ring of Frost, or any sort of Ancestral. So that was a, that was a, like a, a good sneak on the side of Dad Force. That was a really strong sneak for them. It, it keeps the game even. Um, they're not losing out on that extra, you know, four damage to their core. But it looks like we're going to have these Pumpkin Sappers picked up by Alaska. And it looks like they might be rotating, pushing, you know, walking these into the tower. Trying to confirm this bottom bell tower. Uh, turn it into one of their own forts. But it looks like we're going to have a huge posturing on the side of Dad Force. It looks like Hedgy will scout out the majority of the team. Bubble this just kind of providing a little bit of, you know, backup in case they try and go. This game is completely dead even. It is, it is... This is pretty back and forth. But at this point, it has been... Uh, it's going over starting a little bit in the side of Alaska, just experience-wise. Um, Kill-wise, I mean, they're, they're, they're pretty close. There's a three-kill difference right now, so it's it's nothing insane. Now, we do have a lot of dedication into this bottom lane. Brightwing is actually in top, but I don't think has shown yet. And once that Brightwing shows, I believe there should be a dive. Um, 
Looks like they get one of the pumpkin sappers in. The leyline seal is out. I don't think Brightwing can. I don't think Brightwing can see onto any of the members. There is a mush onto three of the members, but Rory, I think, walked into it. There is an unstoppable as well. The torment of souls is out onto so many of the members. Nobody has fallen yet, though. Rex was falling quite low in the back line. We actually have one kill on to Garrosh, though. Power slide out. From Bubble, this will confirm just the repositioning. They actually get the kill onto Sierra, so this will be a triple alter phase. And Bubble, this is taking quite a bit of damage. Now they are fighting our, underneath their own tower. Rexbook currently in that bush, able to get the uh, disengage. Lunara will confirm the top right. They do get the telekinesis on to Bubble this. So they get the three shots. Rexbook should be able to confirm this before Lunara gets there, I would think. Otherwise, we're going to have a 1v1 up there. We're currently going to have Alarak potentially falling in the bottom. The cleanse is there. Do we have a portal forward? Is there a Leyline Seal is not available? We currently have the top left going over to uh, Alaska. And it looks like there is a chase. And they will be having to run underneath the tower. Unfortunately, Kirby doesn't get there. Now, Velvet will be able to phase shift away onto Tofuts and able to get out of there. But we currently have Sierra's. Ooh. And actually, um, just a quick note in game. Uh, once the center point pops up, I believe the towers are now worth like uh, keep damage and keep experience. Now they, they scale at keeps at this point as well as damage. So uh, that's definitely something that you want to consider when you're in your games. Now um, I believe they got that bottom over. So they, they will get a little bit of an experience boost on the side of uh, Dad Force. But they're going to go ahead and steal away these extra four shots, putting the core health of Dad Force at 10 currently. So with that, that's boss off the map. They currently make a rotation into onto Kurt Dog in this make. They get the knock knockback onto him. The slow is there. They currently are diving onto him. The unstoppable is out. He does try and get there's another knockback, and it will be Kurt Dog falling here. Chromie does get the slowing stands out. Big Beard trying to get a little bit of damage up, but unfortunately does not connect onto any of the members. There's a little bit of a chase here, but I think they just kind of chase him up this point, and they're gonna go ahead and just steal this away. Uh Hedgy providing the ess essential vision that they need. Gonna try and get a Pull on the bubble this. This is... He doesn't... But here's the thing. We have portals. Uh, so they're going to go ahead and portal right over that. And that should be fine. And this is what I was talking about in draft. You get a toss. That toss? Awesome. Any other situation? Awesome. But in this one, you have a Medivh. So it's just portal. Deuces. Um, we're going to go ahead and push this pumpkin sapper camp into your bottom lane and potentially get another keep. Now we currently have Sierras. It looks like going ahead and getting that camp. We do have all... No, actually, I think they get the kills, so they don't actually get these. We do have Heady Diving in here, getting a huge Leyline Seal onto a few of the members. There's the Ring of Frost underneath it. A huge Mosh Pit on top of that. There's also just a huge blow up on so many of the members. We currently have ETC taking so much damage, but there's the Protect onto him as well. Lunar in the back lane will be falling low, trying to dive in there, but we currently have Heady trying to dive into the Bright Wing with so little health. There is a Telekinesis onto CRS. He is able to get away. On if that was on Heady, he might have died to Kurt Dog there, I do believe. But he got through the portal in time they convert over this bell tower and bottom and this potentially with the next two members falling here actually they get hedgy will be able to get through the gate they get the kill onto the chromie and they turn that around so they stagger one more death they go ahead and they rush towards this bottom and at this point it's a core health of five for dad force and their their back is is a little bit up against the wall in this situation um now they do have 16s on their side so they have that advantage the one thing that they need to do here is play extremely safe make sure they're not really leaning too far forward um, they need to realistically just group, take this bottom back, and try and take a fight under even talents. Maybe catch them out in some sort of rotation. Um, you know, if they scout out that Rhaegar's on top, they don't have that global aspect, so they can maybe go in for a 5v, you know, a 4v5, um, taking the advantage there. But we're gonna see. We currently have Chromie back up at this point. They convert the Bell Tower in bottom lane, but it looks like Alaska's gonna go ahead... Posture up over by the siege camp. Question is, do they know that... Currently just going to have... So Hedgy will provide vision. They're going to show over there. The question is, do they go in for the invade? They don't use the wisp for it. They're going to go ahead and just rotate out of their bottom lane. Okay. Um, unfortunately, this camp is now just going to get de-pushed and... I mean, mid wasn't really in any sort of big trouble, I don't think. Um, but that's going to get de-pushed, and they still have this camp rotating in. We do have uh, Vision from Bubble this. The team will rotate back, and unfortunately, they're, they're going to be kind of not out of position, but they're going to be rotating into this a little bit late, and they actually get all three Pumpkin Sappers onto the core. 
or onto the keep, and they just walk away from this at this point. So they get it a little bit low. They don't conf they don't convert it completely. I'm taking the wrong keys here. I'm gonna go ahead and just pull this away for now, just to see. This is just a big fight. We want to make sure that we see everything that happens here. Portal in from Medivh. He currently gets three people with the Leyline Seal. There's a Mosh Pit that's interrupted right away. There is the Stasis from Chromie, I do believe. There's a huge Ring of Frost underneath so many of the members, but we actually have the... Oh my god, the double kill from ETC. The, oh, the Alarak will be dying here. We do have Sears diving onto Lunara. She will be dying as well, and that is just going to be the Brightwing alive. Currently trying to run away from Rexpo, but it looks like... There's the hearth in the bush. The GG's already called. Velvet versus Rexpo. We'll just want to see. Ooh. Ooh. Medivh's going to portal in. Protect is out. Malisir is not getting the connection. Currently just... Oh. The, the GG well played. I like that. Just throwing out. And the poison will just be left onto her. And they go ahead. They get that last kill. And Vern will con confirm these last shots. The GG's are called out. And it looks like that is going to be game number two going over to Alaska. They will take three points in this series. GG, well played.